Now we are being asked to find the critical numbers of x to the two-thirds. So again, we just got to take the derivative. And this derivative is going to be two-thirds times x to the what? Two-thirds minus one is negative one-third. And we can clean that up a little bit by saying two over oops, two over three times the cubed root of x. So negative one third is just one over the cubed root of x. Okay, so this is the derivative. And when will this derivative equal zero and when will will it not exist? Those are the critical numbers. Well, it won't ever equal zero. The the denominator, or the, sorry, the numerator is two, and the denominator can never make uh, a function zero. So this will never equal zero. But is there any number where where this function won't exist? And yeah, when x is zero, if we if we plug zero in for x, so let me show you, f prime of zero, plug in zero in, we're going to get two divided by zero. The cube root of 0 is 0 times 3 is 0. So 2 over 0, this does not exist. Sorry about that. That was my phone getting a text message. OK, so the, the derivative doesn't exist when, when x is 0. So x equals 0 is a critical number. So we found the critical number. Not too difficult. Let me put that up there, our answer, and clean this up a little bit and show you a graph. So maybe you can imagine what this graph was going to look like before it came up. We said that the uh, 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 derivative doesn't exist when you have a sharp turn. So here is an example of that. Here we have at x equals 0, we have a sharp turn. And so that derivative doesn't exist, just like we would expect. Okay, and, and this critical number happens to be a minimum. This is the minimum of, of this function, this critical number, x equals 0. Now let's look, at, let's look at its derivative, but before we do that, since we've already done a couple of them, can you imagine what, what the derivative might look like? And I know this is a difficult challenge, so pause the video if you want and, and, and think about it. But let's look at what's happening. To the left of 0, all the, these slopes are what? They're all negative, right? Every single one of these slopes is negative to the left of 0. So we, we imagine that to the left of 0, the derivative is going to be down here. It's going to be negative somewhere. Now let's look at, at the steepness of the slopes. Here, up here, this slope is, it's, you know, it's relatively steep, but it's not, it's not too steep. So that might be something like negative 1 or negative 2 or who knows. And then they're getting steeper, though. And the steeper a sl the slope gets, that means that it, you're going to have, for every one change in x, you're going to have a lot more negative changes in y. Right? You're moving down a bunch in y for only one change in x. And, if you, and they keep getting steeper. Meaning this might be like, the slope might be negative 100 changes in y for only one change in x. That's, that's what, st the bigger the number, the steeper the, the function is. So if they keep getting steeper and steeper, we expect the function as it gets, the derivative, sorry, as it gets closer to zero, we expect the, the derivative to be getting more and more negative. Right? If it was negative one up here, let me show you. If the slope is negative one up here, and then here it's negative four, and then here it's negative 100, then as we're getting closer to zero, we expect the function to be dropping, or the derivative, the derivative to be dropping. Okay, so all those numbers are talking about slope, the slopes of the tangent lines. So let's actually take a look at it now, now that we reasoned it out a little bit. And here is the function with its derivative. So in blue we have the function, and in red we have its derivative. And just like we talked about, as, the, as we're getting closer and closer to zero, the function is getting more and more negative. And this crossing over the line here, that's just because I put a thickness. The, I increased the thickness of this, 
this line so it really doesn't cross the axis there just to can I don't want to confuse you but anyways like we said up up here the function the 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 slopes are you know aren't aren't that much and then as we get closer and closer to zero the slopes are getting steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper and on the other side the opposite is true the slopes are going up so they're really steep to begin with and then they start leveling off and and of course this for the derivative zero doesn't exist and we can see that I, I wish I had left it let me go back and redraw it if we reorganize this derivative and we put zero in we ended up with two over zero remember f prime of zero is two over zero is undefined but we know that this is a vertical asymptote a non-zero over a zero is a vertical asymptote and so the derivative should have a vertical asymptote at zero and of course it does has that vertical asymptote at zero okay so here it was a little bit harder of a of a problem to to see the the function its derivative but hopefully after we've talked about it now it's it makes a lot of sense see you in the next video i think we're going to do one or two more of these